Let me greet all of you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Can I start by saying to you all, welcome to the house of the Lord in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Tell the person that is close to you, welcome. In the mighty name of Jesus. I'm not going to take much time, so I say every day. But I believe the Spirit of the Lord will help us today in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Let's just all stand up and we all go and pray. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your grace and your mercy, your love upon our lives. The Holy Spirit that is reigning in our lives, directing us each and every step of the way talking to us, lifting us in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for you are God in the highest. You are faithful, you are just, you are a good God. You are a righteous Lord, the I am that I am, the Lord God Almighty. We thank you for everything that you are doing in our lives. And we believe that today is the day of our breakthrough. And Lord, as we listen to your word, guide us, teach us. Until eventually, Father, we do understand what you are saying to us. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, let it be in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Let me start again by greeting you again in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Today I want us to speak about something we usually speak about or something that we usually do not consider as children of God. I want us today to speak about faith. Can you write in your book, Faith? Then you can go and ask your friend, what is faith? To what is faith? Faith is believing in the unseen. You believe in the things that you cannot see. You believe in the things that you are not sure of. And you believe that they are there even though they are not visible. If I come to you and say by faith you have a car, you believe that you have it even though you are not seeing it. If I come to you, I say by faith you are healed. You believe that you are healed even though you are still feeling pains. Hallelujah. If I come to you and say you have breakthrough, even though your things are still not going the way you were thinking or supposing, you just believe that you have the breakthrough, though your things are not going the right way or the way you were thinking, that's having faith. So let me start by saying, let us go and look. I believe most of us, we know this chapter or this verse, Hebrews chapter 11, by very 11, and we go and read verse 1. There is a lot of explanation and examples in the book of Hebrews chapter 11 that explains to us what faith is all about. But I will just pick on a few and speak about a few so that we may know and understand what we are talking about. Our focus, most focus today will be in Hebrews chapter 11. We are living these days as Christians, born again, children of the Most High God, but we don't have faith. Can you ask the person that is next to you, do you have faith? Do you have faith? And ask again, where is your faith lying? And let the person explain 
or tells you where is his her faith lying. And ask again, why do you say you have faith? If I were you, I was going to be writing these questions that I'm asking. Why do you see that you have faith? Or why do you say that you have faith? Okay, let's go and read. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. It reads, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Can I read it in 32? Ga ile tomelo ke khulufelo ye itileng ya go kholofela tshe di lete tshwego ke go bota tshe di sabonwego ka mahlo. Father thank you for this word in Jesus name. Amen. So now, more about the language we have read today, we are hearing that faith is a substance. A substance is a root, the core, the foundation of things hoped for. A substance of things that you are hoping for, things that you are wishing to have, things that you are dreaming to have. Things that you are supposing that they can happen to you. Things that when you are alone, you build and you think that maybe someday these things are going to happen to me. I can just give just like a few examples. When we are still young, like young people here in the church, you dream that one day you'll be somebody's husband. You wish that one day you'll be somebody's wife. You also dream that one day you'll have a car. And others dream that one day I'll have a good job. One day I'll have a beautiful house. One day I'll build a mansion for my parents. I'll give them money. One day I'm going to be a millionaire. One day God will allow me to be a millionaire. Now what I'm talking about is Whatever that you are dreaming about or thinking about needs a foundation. And the foundation of it all is faith. The core of it all, the core, let me say, the pillar of what you are hoping for is faith. Through faith, you can say things that other people don't understand and you yourself only understand them. Through faith you can speak about things that nobody, when they look at you, they think you are a little bit crazy or you don't understand what is happening in life until you know that it is because you have a foundation that has been built in you and the foundation is your faith in God. Now, when you have faith in God, you hope for every good thing. You wish that every promise that God has given will happen in your life. Why? Because you trust in his word and believe in his word. Then it went forward and said, it is the evidence of things to come. You hope, and now you have the evidence. How can we say we have evidence when there is nothing that is visible? How can we say we have evidence when you don't even have money? How can we say you have evidence when you are still going to school and you are unemployed? How can we say you have evidence? Whereas your foundation is not even there. Now when you have faith, when you are in Christ, when you are a child of God, you have evidence of things 
Why? Because people of old, our elders, they have these testimonies that these things are happening when you have faith in God. You don't need anybody to tell you or explain to you that God has done this and this. By reading the word of God or reading the Bible, you start to understand that really, truly, these things can happen to me as long as I go on trusting and as long as I go on hoping in the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you tell the person that is close to you again, do you have faith? Ask again, do you have faith? Let us read verse 2. The same chapter. It says, for by it the elders obtained a good testimony. This means when you have faith, you have good testimony. Why good testimony? Because you are believing or trusting in the one that will make your things to happen. The Bible says, for with God nothing is impossible. So when you have faith in God, whatever that you are thinking, hoping, believing, comes to pass. As long as you have faith that these things are going to happen. We need faith as children of God to believe in things that are not seen. We need faith as children of God to believe that one day I'll be a millionaire. We need faith in God to believe that one day God is going to use me as his servant, as a pastor. We need faith to believe again that God has a purpose with my life. You stop using the ways of men and you stop using your own intelligence and you stop using the way men think and you start using the way that God has placed in you. You start having faith in whatever that you come across in life believing that God can do it for you. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Hallelujah. So now, we understand as Christians, we are all Christian, isn't it? Eh? We are all Christians. Now we believe as Christians that this world that we are living in was created by God. Were you there? Huh? We were not there, ne? Okay. Now we believe that this world was created by God. We believe what the Bible says about God and creation and men. We believe whatever that is written in the Bible. So now when we hear whatever that has been written in the word of God, this thing starts to send a message to our inner being, our inner man, our spirit, our soul inside. That there is something good that God can do in our lives. So that I can be able to reach where I'm going. To be able to attain whatever that I'm dreaming about. To be able to get whatever that I'm thinking I want in life. It is through faith. Now faith, the Bible says, cometh by hearing. And hearing the word of God. Faith does not just come. Hallelujah. Can you tell the person that is close to you? Faith does not just come. In the book of Romans chapter 10, verse 17, it says so. Faith cometh by hearing. Hearing by the word of God. You might have heard me many times, many instances. When I call people to come and testify in front, I will say, if you have a testimony, come to the front and tell us what God has done in your life so that our faith can be lifted. I get it? So that our faith can be taken up. 
why we are here in the house of the Lord to hear the word of God. We are here in the house of the Lord so that our faith can grow. How does our faith grow? It grows by listening to the word of God. Our faith grows again by hearing our friends' testimonies. When somebody stands there in front and say, I came here, I was not walking, and I was prayed for, God helped me, he healed me, and now I can walk. Right in our midst, there will be somebody seated there at the back. Maybe this person has a problem of legs. His legs or her legs are not working. Immediately, that person hears this one testifying. Or oh, thank God I'm healed. He starts to have faith and start to say in his or her heart, it means even me today, I can be healed. Hallelujah. Now, your faith can never grow if you don't read the word of God. Your faith can never grow if you don't go to the house of God. Let me explain it this way. Faith or having faith is to be a crazy person who believes in crazy things That's, that has been done 2,000 ago, 2,000 years ago by some crazy old people. And you believe that those crazy things that are written in that book can also happen in these days that we are living in. That's having faith. Did you hear me? To have faith you must live a life that other people does not understand, do not understand. If you are two people and you are walking hand in hand or together and you understand each other, I'm telling you, you are going to affect each other's faith. Because I, right now, I can be having, having hope, hoping that God one day He's going to give me money and I want to buy a car. And this person that I'm living with, that I'm having as my friend, he's hoping that one day God is going to lift me up and I want to be a pastor. And the third person is hoping, as we are here, all of us, all of us, we've got hopes. We are hoping for something. Isn't it? And the third person now is hoping. It's like God can give me money. I want to build a very big house. So now when we come to the issue of faith, when I say is to believe in things that no man who's earthly can understand is because you are believing in things that when people look at you through their eyes, of flesh, they don't see what you are saying or what you are thinking about. When you come to the house of God, when you are still down and you say, I believe God can raise me and make me something good or make something good out of me. When you back, go back home, when they look at you and say, you know, I'm so blessed today. I believe God is going to grant me a job. They just look at you and say, ah, shame. Why? Because they don't believe in what you are believing in. That's faith. Hallelujah. So now can you ask the person that is close to you, do you have faith? When you have faith, you speak things that comes to pass. Not now. By the time of God. When you have faith, you believe in things that people don't understand. And you, when you believe in those things, those things start to happen in your life. What we are reading in chapter 11, verse 4 said, By faith, Abel gave a good sacrifice. 
Who told Abel to go and give a sacrifice or a good sacrifice? Who taught him to do so? I never heard so in the Bible that maybe his father, his mother used to teach him to go and make sacrifices. But because he was hoping that whomever God that has created them on earth is the one who has given them whatever they have, it will be better for him to go and give a better sacrifice to the Lord God Almighty. And the Bible says after when the brother was angry and he killed him, he says his blood spoke for him though he was dead because he gave in faith. Faith is when you take things that pertaineth to your being and you believe that when you give them to this one that we don't see by our naked eyes, they are going to change your destiny. Abel gave. Though he was dead, his blood spoke for him. Why? Because he gave in faith. Can you ask the person that is close to you? Do you give in faith? Do you give in faith? Verse 5 says, Enoch was taken and he was not seen or he did not die or he didn't get, have a grave. Why? Because he pleased God. Enoch pleased God by his faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you ask the person that is next to you, do you have faith? Now I have seen a lot of things happening to people. Spoken to a lot of people. And I will ask questions and love to hear what they have to say about whatever they are telling me. And I found out that many of us, we don't have faith. I'll not to mail. We don't have faith because when we come to church here, we believe that as long as mama prays for me, if she doesn't pray for me, it means I'm not healed. Hmm? If daddy does not pray for me, it means I'm not healed. The Bible says, faith, Yahweh, you can be healed. Cometh when you hear the word of God that somebody was lame, he couldn't walk, and he was healed. He stood up, started walking. And you believe in that word. Whatever that you are believing in. Started to happen. It will start to manifest in your own life. And you will see yourself doing things. That you never thought you will do. That's faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now faith. Makes us to reach levels in life. That we thought we can never reach. Faith make us to reach levels in life that we thought we can never reach. When you have faith, you believe in spiritual realities. Hmm? When you have faith, you believe in what? Spiritual realities. Things that happens in the spirit. Things that are not there in flesh, but maybe they are there in the spirit world. You start to believe in them. That's when you have faith. When you have faith, your faith leads you to righteousness. 
you want love yourself to be seen doing wrong. Why? Because you want this thing that you are hoping for to happen in your own life. You wouldn't love to see yourself going out of the way. Why? Because you want what you're hoping for to come to you. And by so doing, you will be counted as somebody that is righteous before the eyes of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you ask again the person that is close to you, do you have faith? Faith is the uttermost weapon that we can use so that we can be able to reach where God wants us to reach. Faith is the uttermost thing. Faith is what? The uttermost thing. You know, when you have faith, you can do things that people never thought you can do. Not because you have the ability or the strength, but because you just trust in the Lord that it can happen. When you have faith, you seek God. It will never help you if you have faith, but you don't seek God. You don't want God. You don't seek his word. You don't seek his advice. You don't seek his promises. You don't seek his commandment. What is it that God is saying about my situation? What is it that my God is saying about what I'm meeting along the way? You just go on on your own ideas and your own thinking. Most of the things that we meet across the line or along the way as Christians need us to have faith. Hmm? Even when you are hearing the pain and the pain is so strong, you must have faith that God says I'll be healed and I believe I'm healed. Even when you have submitted your CVs all over the companies that you know in South Africa, you just believe that I have my job because God is going to give me my job in his due time. Even though you have walked all around in South Africa searching for a tender or a business, you just believe that because God says so, I'm going to have it. You know, our problem is we miss the words that God has spoken in his Bible, in his word. That is why our faith does not grow and we cannot reach where God wants us to reach. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you ask again the person that is close to you, do you have faith? A person who has faith obeys God's command. You obey the commandments of God. That's what I was saying. You don't go by the ways of men. You go by what God is saying. When God says no, it's no for you. When God says yes, it's yes for you. When you have faith, you don't search things the fleshly way. You search things the godly way. When you have faith, you trust that God is the one who has started your journey and you will be able to finish it because he is there. It's when you have faith. Can you ask again the person that is close to you, do you have faith? In verse 6, Of the same chapter. It says. Without faith. It is impossible. To please God. It will never happen. To please God. The Bible says. God is spirit. Those that worship him. 
must worship him in spirit and in truth. Hallelujah. Now the Bible is saying when you don't have faith, faith is a spiritual thing. If you don't have faith, it will be very much difficult for you to please God in heaven. Because through his word, when you read it, the word of the Lord is going to tell you or explain to you, my daughter, what you are worrying about, what you are crying for, you have it. My son, what you want to be, you have it. Because I, the Lord, have given it to you. But now, if you don't have faith, you don't trust that which you have heard through the word of God. And the word of God is the one that builds up in our Christianity so that we can become what God wants us to be. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you ask the person that is close? Do you believe that you have faith? Remember, this is not a church service, it's a class. Agar? Do you believe that you have faith? You know, there are people who can pray. Hmm? Pray. I thank God I, it's long that I've been here. I've seen people who can pray. But prayer, if you don't have faith, cannot bring anything to you. You will just make noise. Noise and noise and noise. And what you are shouting about won't come to pass. Why? Because you don't believe in what the word says. Are you hearing me? Hallelujah. Can you tell your neighbor, if you don't have faith, you cannot please God. You know, when you wake up early in the morning at home, there is no food in your house. You believe really, somebody from somewhere is going to come and give me food to eat today. I won't sleep with an empty stomach. That's faith. When you don't have money in your hand or in your house, in your pocket, you just believe that I believe that God will going to do something or send somebody from somewhere to come and give me money. I believe I'm going to have money by tomorrow in Jesus' name. And God will do it for you. That's having faith. So now as Christians, as children of the Lord God Almighty, we have to live in the supernatural. We have to live where? In the supernatural. Why do I say we have to live in the supernatural? You have to live in places that people don't live in. You have to believe in things that people don't believe in. Some of the people who were here, like maybe lately, is a I was talking to somebody and I was explaining. I have a stand in Winnie Mandela. I was staying in Winnie Mandela. And that person said to me, Ha, ah, Mama, don't make a joke with that one. I said, I'm not joking, I'm telling you the truth. But when I was still here, I was hoping that one day God will take me to a place that I'm dreaming about. Though that place was not there. When you are a young man searching for these things that they are calling good things in life, you don't rely on the ways of people or your friends. You rely on the God that has saved you and called you by faith. When you are living as a Christian on earth, when you are a young person, older person, or magogo, you don't rely on the ways that people are saying things happen this way. You rely on what the word of God says things happen this way. Listen to what happened to Abraham or Abraham. He was told he will be a father 
of many nations. When he was old, whatever that God told him there in the beginning happened when he was already an old man. And the Bible says the day that his wife had, huh? those angels speaking about she's going to be pregnant. The Bible says she loved. She said, me and an old lady like this conceive and have a child. Uh, even though they say there are miracles on earth, that one can never happen. And she loved. But remember, God has promised from a long time ago that Abraham was going to be a father of many nations. And he believed in the ways that he had. And those things that he believed in came to pass. Hallelujah. Can you ask the person that is close to you again? Do you think you have faith? I want to challenge your faith today. Because most of the things that we are doing here does not show that we have faith. You know, there are Christians that wake up in the morning, every day, go to wherever they are going, searching for jobs like these people of this, of this earth. Let me give you a very beautiful advice. If you are a child of God, believe that your job is going to come and search for you when you are at home. I believe so. Not going around with your CV, holding it by your hand, going from pillar to post, searching for a job. If you are a child of God, you have a mark from heaven. If you have a mark from heaven, they have to identify you from far. And when they identify you from far, your job has to come. Why? Because you have faith in God. You are a family. There is no money in the house. Things are not going the way you were thinking. Trust in God. Trust that God can do it for you. And your family becomes like the family of other people. Not because you are doing things the way people are doing them. But because you are doing things the way God wants you to do them. You know, if we can be able just to pass that line. I'm telling you, heaven is our destiny. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you can go and read the whole book of Hebrews 11. Let me just go then, just pinpoint a few, just a few verses. Verse 6 says, But without faith it's impossible to please him. For who, he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is the rewarder of those who diligently seek him. When you have faith, you must seek God with all your heart all your being, all your soul, your spirit, your flesh, your bones, everything that you have, you must seek God. Not sometimes, but always. Are you always seeking God? Can you ask just the person that is close to you? Are you always seeking God? Now I love to, to say this word. I know God will answer. I don't know when, but I know he will answer. It's not up to me to look at the time. It's up to God to watch the time. I'm just trusting in him. Having faith in him that one day he's going to deliver. And I know he will deliver. The problem that we have is we carry the burden and the load of worrying about the things that we were not supposed to be worrying about. 
Because the Bible says God is the one who worries about us. Hmm? He does what? Worries about us. So we have no need to complain about the things that are happening in us. What we have to do is to have faith, live by his word, make him to be pleased, make him to be happy so that God can then be able to count us as righteous people and he is pleased with what we are doing. When God is pleased by our works and our actions, it's then that whatever we are crying for will come to pass. Hallelujah. Verse 7 says, By faith Noah, being divinely warned of things not yet seen. Are you seeing it? 11 verse 7. Noah was warned of things not yet seen. If you go Old Testament and you read about the story of Noah, you will hear that when he was building the ark, Bomam Gobozi were there. They were laughing to scorn. They were asking him, What are you doing? He said, The rain is coming. Are you crazy? So, no, I'm not crazy. It is coming. Maybe sometimes he even tell them, no, God told me I must big and build a big or a very big ark because big rain is coming. And they laughed at him. They spoke a lot of things about him. And they say maybe some of us, if we were there, we were going to say, Awa, Afa, he's crazy. But Pilobolebo Nati saw when life is still good like this, do you expect such kind of a thing to happen? I don't think so. But Noah, because he heard the word from the Lord God Almighty, he went on and built the ark. And at the end of his building of the ark, it started like Pulayamo Wini Mandela. Namunat, just like little drizzle, raining beautiful and nicely. The whole week went by and it was raining. The second week went by. Ah, it was raining. When the third week was coming, the rain started to be heavy. Hmm? When the third week comes, it started raining heavily. When it was starting raining heavily, Atomo Bali Pulaye Laya de Huerija Ufita, Yamo South Africa, cars were being taken away by water. Things were starting to happen. They started recognizing and recalling what Noah has told them. God says, I'm going to finish the world by water. And when the fourth week came, everywhere it was water. There was no bedroom anymore. There was no sitting room anymore. There was no way to stand anymore. Maybe the best thing was to climb on top of the tree. I don't know. But there was no place for them to enjoy anymore. Until it rained and rained and rained. The Bible says, Arek, the ark of Noah, floated on top of the water. From where it was standing, and it started floating. Remember. I believe the ark was not a small thing. It was a very huge thing. Because the Bible says, God said, he will touch two, two from all the animals. Hmm? If there was cow Sarah and cow John, cow Sarah and cow John, something will just come into their mind. They start walking towards the, car, the ark together and they went there and enter into the ark. And cow Peter and cow Sarah were laughing. When they were going inside the ark. In other words, I'm saying this thing to show you that when you have faith, you only listen to what God tells you, not to what man tells you. I can ask you a question right now. What do you think? What happened to all the animals that entered into the ark of Noah? What make them to go and enter into the ark? 
Ona ya kam pem petrol. King in Saudi Rauri, didn't know Yanin Chepe, didn't know decide or you'll send a car a wreck. Azanga Kitabari, Noah went out and started hunting for them. They were coming to two. Hmm? Leopard Josephina and Leopard, I'm so, I'm poor, keep a little bit of a little. Leopard Josephina and Leopard Joannis, he did that it's a my daily two. Josephina and uh, Joannis coming inside the ark and they went in and sat inside. When you have faith, you hear of the spiritual, not of the flesh. Can you tell the person that is close to you? When you have faith, you hear of the spiritual, not of the flesh. There are a lot of people of old that we can read about in the Bible, in the book of life, where we can learn what faith is all about so that our faith can also be, lift, be lifted. If we go to the book of Mark 21, 21, it says when you have faith, you must not doubt. Matthew 21, 21. When you have faith, you must not do what? You must not doubt. When you have been told you'll get a job, believe you'll have it. When you're told your life will be changing tomorrow, believe it's going to change. When you were told that you are going to be married by a rich man, believe that it's going to happen, it will happen. When you were told that your life will never remain, the, believe that is going to happen. Your life will never remain the same. When you have faith, you li listen too much to the spiritual rather than the fleshly. That is why I said in the beginning, when you have faith, you live the life that outside people don't understand. Matthew chapter 9 verse 20. To 22, we speak about the woman with the issue of the blood. That woman said by faith, I can see in Charis there are a lot of people. I can see in Charis people are going there with different reasons, different hopes, different direction, and different whatever. But I am going there so that I can be healed. What I'm going there for, it's healing. And when she reached there, she found that there were a lot of people. She couldn't even reach to the master. Like when she's trying to reach where Jesus was, there were so many people that will tell her to go back. Don't disturb us. Can't you see we are listening to the pastor? Can't you see? Can't you see you are disturbing us? Can you please stop disturbing us? I believe that's what many people were telling her. Now, when she saw the situation, now when she saw what was happening, now when she saw the difficulty of reaching or finding what she was searching for, the Bible says. She was Komrau behind. She was not in front. If she was in front, it means when Jesus was walking, Jesus was going to find her because she was going to be somewhere there. Now the Bible says she was behind. Now for her to reach Jesus from behind, going around inside people like a snake. I believe some others were even beating her on top of the head. Or what's your problem? It is happening even these days. I once took, spoke to a certain person and through phone, and he said to me, "It's a he." He said to me, "Mama, I really love to come, 
But I have been told so many discouraging things. I don't know if I'm supposed to come or not. And I said to that man, it comes from you. Or do you want or you don't want? If you want, it's for the benefit of your soul. If you don't want, it is also for the benefit of your soul. But if you can try and come, maybe whatever that God wants to give to you, whatever that you are crying for, God is going to give it to you. I didn't want to hear whatever he was told or whatever. I just said to him, if you try maybe, it can be better for you rather than sitting at home. After some few weeks, I didn't know that he came. Because most of the time when people call me through the phone and ask about information or whatever, I told you the other time, I don't tell them my name. I tell them I'm Mashudu Pupi. I have a reason of saying so. I get it? So now after that, after some time, he wrote to me an email. When he was writing an email, he was writing the email to the church because the email address is written there as the email address of what? Of the church. She said to me, I spoke to a lady by the name of Mashudu. I said my name is Wum Wum Wum. And he, she said to me, I must come and try and see if God is going, not going to do whatever that I'm crying for. It's better to try than to sit down at home. What made me to be happy, he said, by faith I took the words she told me and I came. I wish I can have time to come back and give a testimony. I am totally healed. And I answered him and said, your faith has taken you to your destiny. It takes faith for you to have what you want. It takes faith for you to get hold of what you are searching for. This lady was having a problem of the issue of blood. The Bible says she was moving inside the people, inside the crowd of people. And at the end, she told us, if only I can just touch the hem of his garment, I know I will be made whole. She did like that, she did like that, until at the end, I don't know, I was asking myself, how did she know that now this one is the hem of Jesus' garment? And I said to myself, it means her faith told her now this one is the one. Eh? When she reached there, can we reason about it? How did she know this one now is Jesus come at? Those days they used to wear long robes and whatever. But the Bible says Jesus used to wear purple robes, like expensive robes. But now, even though it's like that, how did she know that this one is Jesus' robe or is Jesus' garment? And she touched it. I believe when she reached there, because of the faith that she was having and believing in the spiritual, you know, there, there might be a lot of people that you are walking around with. And those people that you are walking around with may not be believing in what you are believing in. Do you know that? You might be walking being five, being friends, but not believing in one thing. You are believing in your own thing and that one in his own, that one in his own, that one in his own. Why? Because we've got a, a different mindset. Our minds are not set in a similar way. Let me tell you why I say so. Why are you challenging when you are coping with your own people? It goes by how and what type of challenges have you met in life. 
If you come here and you say I was sick. This lady was having a problem of blood for 12 years. You cannot, you cannot uh, like tell her and say go back and she will go back. Why? Because she heard that they are saying Jesus can heal. Now she want to be healed. Huh? So now you only have flu. Let's have a flu anger. Give me internal joy. Let's try to get the flu. You only have flu, and this flu, when it comes, it just comes for three days, and off it goes. When you see this multitude and this crowd that is following Jesus, I'm telling you, you will never make a way like what that woman did. Do you believe me? You will never struggle the way like that mama struggled. Why? Because the challenge that was in her life is different from the challenge that everyone that was around was having. Now, that was easy then for her to develop or to allow the, the faith in her to grow to the state where she can fight for her own healing. After touching the hem or the garment of Jesus, the Bible says she was made whole. The flow of the blood stopped. And listen to what happens. Jesus said, someone touched me. Somebody touched me. You cannot say like that. Now what are you saying? Why, why, why can you say somebody touched you when I'm, when I'm here? Why, what do you mean? And he said, somebody touched me. You can see now. Look at the crowd. We are 5,000 here. And you cannot say about somebody who touched you. When you see that we are so many around you. Oh, what are you saying? What do you think? Do you think it can happen? The Bible says that woman came trembling. Knelt down before Jesus. And say it's me. Who touched you. When you go to read the Bible. The Bible says Jesus said to her. Your faith has made you whole. Go in peace. Why am I speaking about faith? Your faith will give you what you are crying for. It's not me. It's not prayers. It's not whatever. It's your faith. Can you tell the person that is close to you, your faith will give you what you want. Romans chapter 1 verse 17 says, the just shall live by faith. The just shall live by nothing else but by faith. And in Hebrews 12 verse 2 says, he is the author and the finisher of our faith. The just shall live by faith. We don't walk by sight. We walk by faith. For he is the author and the finisher of our faith. Without faith, you can never reach where you are going. Without faith, you can never live to the fullest of your salvation. Without faith, you can never be what God wants you to be. Without faith, you can never have what you are crying for. Without faith, you can never have what you are praying for. Without faith, you can never please God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you be able to ask the person that is close to you again? For it. Do you have faith? Little Talusage. 
Hả? Put shang up. Do you have faith? This is serious. So. When we don't have faith, we don't reach where God wants us to reach. We fail a thousand and a million times. James chapter 1 verse 3 says, when we are tested, when our faith is tested, it produces patience in us. We become patient to follow God. We become patient so that we can do what he tells us to do. We just love God to do what he has told us that he's going to do in our lives. In all the places when we can go and read about the story of Jesus Christ healing people, you will find Jesus saying unto them, Thy faith has made you whole. Go in peace. Thy faith has made you whole. Thy faith has made you whole. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So now I want to ask you the last question again. The same question. Do we have faith? Ask again the person that is close to you. Do you have faith? Faith.